Good morning. Welcome to our service from the Yardley Hastings Benefice. Today we're taking our service from this sheet, Morning Praise, which uh, you can find on the Benefice website if you'd like to join in and, and follow. Uh, if not, then please do just listen and join in with parts that perhaps you recognise. Our service is one of praise and thanksgiving to God. And we begin in this Easter season by thanking God for the resurrection of Jesus. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! As we come to worship, we bring our own personal prayer in a few moments of quiet. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. When we come to worship, we are aware of our many failings, the things that we would want to ask God's forgiveness for. So come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the love of God bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As I said, we're going to be thinking of things that we would be thankful for. There's so much to concern us and worry us and we're bombarded with the, uh, the hard things of life, the things to, to, uh, to worry us. But St Paul reminds us in his letter to the Philippians to think on the good things. Think on whatever is pure, whatever is holy, whatever is worthy of praise, to think on those. So that's what we're going to do now. You might like to just press the pause button on your computer. If you're sitting with somebody else, then perhaps to share with them things that this week you have been grateful for. If you're on your own, just to sit in quiet remembrance of this week and things and people that you are thankful for. Let's just take a few moments to do that. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy and in our song we will praise our God. We're going to hear a reading now from uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, 
they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. I want to think for a few minutes about a lovely word, hope. Hope is full of optimism. It's a looking forward. Do you remember, perhaps as a child, being asked what you hope for at Christmas or birthdays? Sometimes those hopes were fulfilled and you got just what you wanted as a present. But sometimes there was disappointment. That's just a small example. But true despair, disappointment, discouragement can be soul-destroying. Human hope is a fragile thing, and when it withers, it's difficult to revive. At the moment, we're on a bit of a roller coaster ride. Our hopes can be raised one day uh, when it seems there are fewer cases of COVID-19. Maybe the lockdown might be eased a little. And then another day we get discouraging news that it may be the end of the year or even longer before we can return to some sort of normal life. You may even be afraid to hope. Can we cope with another letdown, another disappointment, more despair? Our reading today tells of a couple of Jesus' followers who are in a similar mood of despair. We had hoped, they said, that Jesus was the one who would redeem Israel. We had high hopes for the future, but now those hopes are gone and all we have left is disappointment. Perhaps you can identify with their feelings. And when the stranger comes along to, and walks alongside them, listens to them, they pour out their tale of hopes and disappointments. We know that that stranger was Jesus. And it's interesting, isn't it? He doesn't tell them to snap out of it. He doesn't tell them who he is and that, he, yes, he really is al alive. He doesn't say, cheer up, come on. He simply walks with them and listens to them. And as they talk of their dashed hopes, the, the stranger is with them. I think that's a great picture 
Jesus walking along with his despondent, confused disciples, sharing their troubles. Suddenly, this 2,000 year old story is brought into the present. When discouragement, depression and despair fill our lives, Jesus is the unseen stranger who walks with us, just as he walked with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. He points us to God's word of promise in the Bible that tells us again that we are God's dearly loved children and that he will stand by us through thick and thin. Jesus does more than just listen. He helps those two disciples to see that God has it all in his hands, that God is in control. And in the same way, he can talk to us and, and let us know that we are in God's hands. He will stand by us and with us. He turns our despair into hope. When our Emmaus road is filled with discouragement, let's walk it with Jesus. Our hope is in him. I want to read the words of a prayer, an old, old prayer called St. Patrick's Breastplate and some of the words some of the words of that prayer are on your news sheet and these are they Christ be with me Christ within me Christ behind me Christ before me Christ beside me Christ to win me Christ to comfort and restore me Christ beneath me Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. I thought we'd sing now uh, a little song that's a very simple song, Be Still and Know That I Am God. It could be the words that Jesus spoke to them. Be still and know that I am God, I am with you. I don't have a fancy recording. I will uh, play it on the piano and I will sing the words, but please do join in. You really don't want to hear just my voice. So be still and know that I am God. And now let's turn to prayer. After each section of the prayers, I shall say, loving God, we look to you. And if you like to, you may respond, receive our prayer. 
there'll be a pause in between uh, each of the, the prayers for you to bring your own prayers. So loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. We pray that Christ may be seen in the life of the church. You have called us into the family of those who are the children of God. May our love for our brothers and sisters be strengthened by your grace. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. You have called us to be a temple where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Give us clean hands and pure hearts so that our lives will reflect your holiness. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. You have called us to be a light to the world, so that those in darkness may come to you. May our lives shine as a witness to the saving grace you have given for all. May we shine your light in our communities in serving other people. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. You have called us to be members of your body, so that when one suffers, all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress. We think of especially of those in our communities who have been ill for a long time. Those who are now ill with the COVID-19 virus. Of those who are suffering with mental problems and emotional problems. And we pray for those who serve them, those who bring you into their lives. For those who work for the NHS and who are carers, Lord, give them strength and resilience for the task ahead of them. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer. You have called us across the world to be your people. We pray for our brothers and sisters in churches, in communities around the world, where they are, as much as we are, fighting the coronavirus. We pray that we may all be united in your love, united in love for your world and your people. Loving God, we look to you. Receive our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. And our collect for this Sunday. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive 
and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We'll sing a final hymn. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. for joining us. Let's close now with a blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing, honour and glory be yours, Lord, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and a fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
moment. 